Do you stand by your vote not to certify the 2020 presidential electoral college vote for now President Biden? The core of that vote, the core of that vote, Tim, was to inspire more debate because I think de debate is healthy for a democracy. So that's what it led to. We didn't have the votes to overturn it, but of course, having the debate was a healthy thing, and um, I do stand by that vote. It was just about healthy debate. That was North Carolina Congressman Ted Budd, the state's Republican nominee now for United States Senate during a debate last week. He had been expected to run away with the race, but recent polling has him in a statistical tie with his Democratic opponent, Sherry Beasley. She joins us now as the former Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court. Justice Beasley, it's great to have you with us this morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, the polls, we just showed one poll that has you within three points of Ted Budd. There's another one that shows it's one point. For all intents and purposes, you have fought your way into a tie with the sitting United States Congressman. How have you done it? What are the issues you think are at the center of this race? You know, Willie, folks are tired of Congressman Bud being embroiled in the pettiness of partisan politics in Washington. And you started the show, uh, the segment, talking about the fact that he's an election denier. And the reality is Congressman Bud said that the folks who rioted at the Capitol, who injured and killed hundreds of police officers, he called them just patriots standing up. And here he is trying to tear down our democracy. I mean, this man has not worked in the interest of folks here in North Carolina. I mean, he really has worked in his own interest, the interest of his corporate donors, and he's done, uh, he's only spread fear and sown division. So we need someone who really is interested in standing for North Carolinians and fighting for our interests. And, and folks across our great state are able to see the difference. Clearly, National Democrats believe you've got a really nice chance to win here. They put $4 million more uh, for a new ad campaign into the race yesterday to go along with $10.5 million from the Senate Majority PAC. Uh, one of the key issues at the center of this, we talked about a poll, the Emerson poll, that has you within three points. In that poll, 81% of undecided voters are women whose most important voting issue is abortion access. What is your view on abortion? Uh, how often should it be legal? When should it cease to be legal in your view? You know, I've been very clear. Uh, I've been a judge for over two decades and served as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina. And I know that women have had a constitutionally protected right to make this decision with their physician without government interference. And I certainly believe in the protections and the restrictions provided by Roe and understand that abortions only happen in late term abort uh, pregnancy when there's a serious issue like risk to a mother's health. Congress and Bud has led the charge on an absolute ban on abortion without exception for rape, incest, or risk to her mother's health. And so we know that if a woman is sexually abused, she will be uh, forced to carry the pregnancy to term, that if she has an ectopic pregnancy or a septic uterus or miscarriage that her body won't release, if the, he gets his way, women will not be able to get the life-saving treatment that they need, which is an abortion, and it means that women will die. And I'm prepared to fight to make sure that Roe versus Wade is the law. And anytime our freedoms are on the line, I will be fighting for the folks in North Carolina uh, and standing up for them. Well, on that question, Congressman Budd has co-sponsored abortion legislation that would make it illegal after 15 weeks. He says there should be exceptions for rape uh, and incest and the health of the mother. Do you think that is an extreme position? Uh, he's been very clear that he is pro-life and that he does support an absolute ban, and that's been his position. He is a co-sponsor of this legislation, but he's been very clear that he supports an absolute ban on abortion without exceptions for rape, incest, or risk to a mother's health. Uh, Justice Beasley, just two weeks ago, former President Trump came to town and said that he accused you of supporting to funding the police. Now you can speak to your record behind the bench on that uh, and tell us what your plan is instead actually to support law enforcement. Well, it's not instead. I mean, I have been on the bench for over two decades, um, and I've been the one who been, who's been respecting the rule of law and upholding the Constitution. And I've worked very closely with law enforcement uh, during my years of service, keeping communities safe. I created the first 
human trafficking a court in North Carolina, which uh, provides provisions for victims to keep them safe and to hold violent offenders accountable. Uh, I have been one who fully believes that we absolutely must fund the police uh, because they absolutely need the funding to protect themselves and our communities uh, while we're also funding uh, community-based intervention programs to stop the cycle of violence. Congress and Bud, on the other hand, uh, is the one who has on four separate occasions voted against funding police for them to be able to retain uh, law enforcement officers to recruit and to fight our opioid crisis. Uh, so he is the one who has been uh, voting in opposition of funding the police. And he's also one who uh, believes that the ones who stormed the, st stormed the Capitol are patriots. So he's the last person to be lecturing anybody about public safety. Uh, he has not at all stood for a safe a safe North Carolina. I have, I worked hard on it. That's been the crux of my uh, service in North Carolina. And I would ask your viewers that they would like to have more converse, uh, information about my campaign, and I hope they do, that they will go to sherrybeasley.com. And Justice Beasley, we've talked about abortion. We've talked about the foundations of democracy as important issues in this race, but far and away, the number one issue in your race and across the country is the economy. 41% of respondents in North Carolina say that is their number one issue. The others pale in comparison. Inflation is still high, even though unemployment is low. What do you propose to do about that? You know, it is, Willie, and we have been to all 100 counties in our the ninth largest state in our nation, and everybody talks about uh, feeling the pain at the pump uh, to the cost of prescription drugs and everything in between. And they want to know that the next senator is going to fight hard to lower costs. Uh, my opponent uh, voted against lowering prescription drug costs while taking thousands of dollars of corporate PAC money from Big Pharma. He voted against lowering the cost of gas while taking thousands of dollars of corporate PAC money from Big Oil. I mean, we need someone who's going to fight for North Carolina to lower costs. And part of what we really need to do is focus on our made in America economy so that we're making our goods here in North Carolina and in this country. And so that we're really uh, optimizing our manufacturing and tech industries here and at the same time, uh, leveraging and building a strong economy here uh, in this country. That's what we need to be focused on. And I agree with folks uh, here in North Carolina and across this country. We must fight to lower costs. And the Senate really has an obligation to do that. Democratic nominee for United States Senate in North Carolina, Sherry Beasley, who has made this race very tight down the stretch here. Justice Beasley, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you,